for solutions and end this thing called poverty. Thank you so very much. And gentlemen, before we go to our questions, quickly here, each of you, is there any way this poverty is connected to the pandemic that we are experiencing today in any shape or form? Any of you can go. I, I think so. I think so. Poverty is connected to the pandemic that we are facing. Because mm -hmm. you can even watch at what is happening today. Most people undergo on on diseases, challenges, whatsoever thing is because of poverty. So poverty affects each and every situation. So you must understand that the pandemic with hit countries that are actually poor and those who have the stability type of health system, it may hit them because when you watch at the Western world today, Oh, it is actually hitting them. When we hit the Western world, we hit is Africa. I'm afraid but all of us will be blotted out. But, but at least some people might be saying, well, America has the most advanced healthcare around or about 600,000 people die. That did not happen in my home country, Liberia. So, yeah, because, uh -huh. because you watch at the American demography. You watch if you watch in, in Syria and Liberia or Africa, if you are around 60 or 70, they are definitely in your grave. And those that are dying in America, I'm not saying young people are not dying, but most people who are dying are aged for Africa. So you are watching at the type of demography that are dying. Those who are being affected in the Western world are actually aged people compared to those of us who are dying to Africa. So that is what I'm saying. It's because of poverty in Africa, you hardly have people who will live above 70 or 80 years. But because of or lack of poverty or whether the sustainability into the Western world or advanced e economy or developed country, you may see people 90, 100 and above living over there. In Africa, it is hardly seen. Seko, how is this poverty connected to the pandemic that the whole world is fighting today? Absolutely. I agree with my friend there because you see, um, poor countries do not have the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the, everything about this pandemic is all the healthcare system is being stressed and a lot of things are needed. People that have the infrastructure were able to kind of bend the curve, even though yes, the powerful and rich country were affected, but you have to look at the life expectancy. The life expectancy in America or Canada, you're talking about 80, 70, 90. In back home, at least the life expectancy there is 50, 54. So most people that are young, so you'll see that the most people that die here abroad, they are actually older people. And they were able to burn the curve because they have the infrastructure. They were able to create the vaccine. But poor country right now, uh, thankfully, for some reason, they, they, we have not seen uh, that much of an impact. But if it start, they do not have the infrastructure to burn the curve. They do not have the hospitals. And they don't even have the, the, the capacity to produce vaccine. So right now, they will be living at the mercy of rich country. So this is what poverty does. It makes you submissive. It make you to, 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 to wait for other people to determine your life. So true, I couldn't agree. Poverty is connected to everything, especially when it comes uh, to life. Yes, coronavirus as epidemic is also connected and I agree more. We don't have the infrastructures. I know so, at some time the hospitals here were overwhelming, but in no time, they were able to build tents in fields. They were able to bring the staff together, the medical practitioners, the healthcare workers were available. And there was money to buy vaccine. You know, there were money to buy PPEs. There were money to buy things like uh, hand sanitizers. They had everything to fight. And so they were able to, you know, uh, get out of the woods a little bit, not completed yet. But in the case of Africa, because of extreme poverty, we don't even have the infrastructure in the first place. We have limited personnel to even fight. And so, like, why going on in Liberia now with the Delta variants? We are scared because we know we are not capacitated to be able to fight. And you are right. You guys are on point. Poverty is connected to everything. And so that brings us to our topic here, folks. The facts about extreme poverty in Liberia. They think of poverty. I experience it. So this topic is important to me. But gentlemen, let's get started. And Seku, let's go for it. Everybody may think they know poverty. Everybody might have experienced some form, not everybody, but most people from Africa, because we're talking about Africa here. What is this poverty? Right. So we'll have to define poverty, then we will define the adjective, the extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. So poverty basically is uh, 
is, is being defined as, you know, someone who, I think, let me use the United Nations definition, which okay. says that it's a social economic condition, a social economic condition of not having enough material possession or income to cater for basic needs. Okay, when you don't have the, 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 the material, the possession and the income to cater for basic needs, and what are the basic needs? Food, shelter, clothing. Maybe you can add education to it. Now, extreme poverty, on the other hand, is to completely lack the means. Okay, you completely lack the means to cater for those basic needs. No means, no opportunity at all to cater for your basic needs. So there's a measurement, there's an international measurement for poverty. So according to the World Bank, if someone earns at least $5 per day, we'll consider them poor. So if you earn $5 per day, let's say you earn $150 per month, you'll be considered a poor person or below the poverty line. But if you earn $1 or 1.90, that is considered extreme poverty. Okay. And you have a lot of people, even in Africa, who don't even earn that $1 per day. So if you look at the, the international measurement, $1 per day is considered extremely poor and $5 per day is considered poor. So when you look at this uh, uh, measurement that is being given on an international standard, you find out that the case is very, very worse. Now, if I would give a few statistics here, according to the same World Bank, 64% of Liberians live in extreme poverty. That means they cannot end. 64% is very important you look at this number. 64% of Liberians are poor. Okay, and you had it. They even say you are, I think, 1.5 million, and our population is just 4. Point something million, 4.9. And you have 1.5 million people who cannot afford a dollar per day. Wow, so that is very serious. And I said, according to this COVID 19, about 40 million Africans will be impoverished, will go below the poverty line because of this COVID-19 alone, because small businesses are closing, there's all this lockdown they are doing, there is no, uh, nothing to, to, to call stimulus package, it's only on paper, but they are not giving anything, unlike the rich countries where people actually got cash in their account. In poor countries, they just tell them lockdown, these people close their little businesses and they go home and nothing is reaching them from government. So as a result of that, 40 million people will go below the poverty line before 2022 in Africa. It's as serious as that. Wow, that is very serious. Uh, Mr. Edward Amara, the question is, what is extreme poverty? And do you agree with Siku here? No, thank you very much. I think I, I greatly agree with most of his opening points, though I may try to disagree with him as the time goes by. But on that note, uh, on that note I think uh, when we talk about poverty, we talk about the state's of somebody not being able to rest to be responsible for himself in terms of the financial financial needs. It could be like food, even his protection, whatever. So poverty is just like a broad term. When you use the word poverty, it affects each and every aspect of the society. Of poverty could take the aspect of electricity. People who have electricity, people who are electric, they are not educated. They are also poverty in poverty in terms of education. Some people are serving poverty in terms of their health status. If you lack health, you are in poverty. So people are serving poverty, they don't know even what, how, how, what to eat. So as he was rightly saying, the one that is talking about extreme is be into that vulnerable state that we are in. You can't on your own, you can't feed till somebody comes in to your aspect of feed. When you watch at it in the aspect of Sierra Leone or, or Sub-Saharan Africa, I'm talking about West Africa, Pasi, you may understand that poverty have engulfed the society. This is an environment where you will be staying. You see people definitely vulnerable. You are dying not because they need to die, not because they want to die, but because there is a need for them to die because the situation is so vulnerable to understand that. That they can easily kill somebody, and that tells you that it's related to poverty. So poverty is a situation in Syria, Leone, Liberia, and whatsoever. Like in Syria, they even tell you around 60% uh, of the population are definitely living under a dollar per day. A uh, single dollar in Syria, Leone, is equivalent to to 10,000 years. And most homes here cannot even feed per day, which is equivalent to $1 some homes, irrespective of the population. They can't feed the $1 per day because of inflation. So poverty has so affected the society that they have to dwindle everything that they have to our moral culture because when you are poor and in situation like this, you tend to even overlook your own value. 
whatsoever thing they have. So, but poverty have just made them vulnerable and it's so extreme. It's so difficult. It is just that people tell you that we are swimming in the net of, of riches at the same time. We are suffering under the shackle of poverty. So when you watch at Sierra Leone, somebody will tell you that it's a very rich country. We have that it's a dominant country. Everything is here. But when you get on reality on the ground, you find out that people are really, really suffering beyond imagination. So poverty has actually affected us in every aspect. I couldn't agree there, uh, Edward. You know these numbers that have been pulled out by these multilateral institutions. They don't capture everything. They don't go to my village of Saskatchewan. They don't go to the least hamlet in the country. These are just estimates. And though they are estimates, see how alarming they are. We know there is something called poverty and it's extreme. I remember there were time I woke up, gentlemen, because I knew I would not get it. I would drink a big cup of water to carry me through sometime to 6 p.m. before I could get that meal to eat. I know this thing called poverty. Those of you who are following us, you need to be here. If you are from Africa, let's talk about this poverty. Seku, why are the myths and facts about poverty? Because some people might be thinking otherwise here. Yes. You know, it's interesting. It's important that we discuss the myth and the facts because mm -hmm. when it comes to poverty, there's a lot of theories out there. A lot of the tech, uh, technocrats out there are trying. Even our government now is all pro -po. There's a lot of things going on. But people are mixing the myth with the facts. So that's why we have to discuss it. Now, let me give you some myth about poverty. The first one, they say people are poor because they are lazy. That's a myth. You find out a rich country sometimes say, oh, these Africans are lazy. That's why they are poor. Or this person, if you, if you if you belong to a particular social location in a social location in Africa where you belong to the one percent that is getting money or that is stealing government money, then you start looking at the rest of the population. Oh, they are lazy. That's why they are not getting it right. That's a myth. It's a social economic condition. That means the state is implicated. That means all the all the institutions within the country are responsible when there is poverty. In the social institution, the government, everybody is responsible when there's a rampant poverty in the country. So it's not about the certain group of people are lazy. That's what I do. Because it's lack of opportunity. Poverty is an oppression. So if somebody is oppressed, who is enjoying the privilege? It's because someone needs to have privilege in order for another person to be oppressed. So when people are poor, that means they are being oppressed at the detriment of because certain people are enjoying it. So you cannot say they are lazy, that's why they are poor. That's a myth. The second thing there, they say a country is poor because it doesn't have enough natural resources. That's how certain people look at it. World Bank and all that. They say this country is poor because they don't have enough natural resources. The truth is the most powerful country or richest country in the world today have zero natural resources or in, uh, close to nothing. Japan does not export any natural resources. Okay. Uh, France has nothing called natural resources. So you can't say a country is poor because it doesn't have enough natural resources. You hear our government making the case, oh, we don't have enough revenue, our natural resources is not enough. We been... It's not about natural resources that you export. That's not what's going to make you a rich country. The rich countries in the world is not about the natural resources that they export. So that's a myth. The second myth is that certain countries are rich and powerful because they have enough natural resources, just almost like the first one. No, richness is not associated with the natural resources. Now, what are the facts about poverty? Poverty is man-made. We need to understand that. It's man-made because there are structural issues that must, there are, there are structure that must collapse before poverty will take root. There will be bad governance. There will be certain people who are benefiting at the detriment of the majority. There will be a, a, a wrong government exp expenditure will be, a, will be done in a very wrong way. That will lead for, I'll give Liberia as an example. When you have a lawmaker having 15,000 US dollars in his pocket for a break, and you have 60% of the country population cannot earn $1 per day, you know already where the poverty is being manufactured. You don't need to go anywhere else. You don't need. But when you say poverty is natural, you are trying to say that God Almighty made it possible 
But for people to be poor, so they should take it with a grain of salt. They should accept it as a faith. But that's not true. We know that there are institutions that manufacture poverty. And one of them is our legislature. That's where the poverty is being manufactured in Liberia. African government manufactured poverty and gave it to their people. And they say it's natural or it's from God. Okay? So these are things you need to look at. Also, poor countries. Why are certain countries poor and certain countries rich? The answer is very simple. The rich and powerful countries have found a way to block the industrialization of poor countries or failed states. They do not want to see you industrialized because they benefit from your poverty. Because as you export the natural resources to them, their industry are making millions. And you are going now into poverty. We will take Africa as an example, the cocoa and the coffee. So cool. When they export the cocoa and the coffee for a few dollars, and they take it to France, and France made billions of dollars. And you you don't, you, you, you are wondering why Avorians are poor and the French are rich. It all has to do with industrialization and manufacturing. So the, the United the, the World Bank, the IMF, are working hard to make sure Africa does not industrialize so that we remain in poverty, then the European countries become rich. That's just the mathematics. You don't need any technician to come and tell you anything else. And Seko will come back uh, for you to expand more on that component about the Europeans, uh, you know, Western countries, you know, influence in manufacturing or, you know, perpetrating poverty more in Africa will come to that. Uh, but on your first expose, yes, I, I, I agree. And I agree that poverty has been manufactured in Africa, especially at the legislature. And before Edward can come in, let me share this with all of us. Look, we elect lawmakers. Some of them all sit down on a tie, in a tie shop. They have nothing. Some people even have to pay their way. Barely six months into office, we see them building mansions. They are out of poverty immediately. And in the case of Liberia, from our research, Every lawmaker in Liberia makes around half a million dollars a year. Half a million dollars a year goes to every lawmaker in Liberia. Imagine these people giving our country money to themselves just because they work uh, just 16 hours a day. This guy go to work just four hours and they have section two days, right? Imagine if we have allotted the budget in a way that at least a citizen get, gets just $10,000 a year. And that goes on for 10 years. Some citizens who are economical or very thrifty, they'll be able to transform their life. But that is the opposite. The money goes to them. And I continue to remind us, the lawmakers are giving us $30 million and they are giving each country in Liberia just $200,000 for quote unquote country development funds. And these guys will even go after that $200,000 and detail to the superintendents how they should be used. Sometimes they, they send the superintendent themselves will have to get something to these lawmakers so that they cannot be held accountable. So yes, I couldn't agree more. Poverty is being manufactured in my home country, Liberia, at the legislature and at the executive branch of government as well. Also, same question to you, Mr. Edward Amara. Uh, sorry, we have to take a little longer to get to you because this thing is serious. Why are the myths and facts about poverty in our country, or in our, on our continent, Africa? No, thank you very much. I see the myth about poverty in Africa is just trying to cast blame on colonial masters that they are the manufacturer of poverty into Africa. The fact that we are born poor. Um, let me tell you one thing. I think when you watch at the beginning of the world, there was no, no, in Europe, in Africa, no country was rich. God created life and he, he blessed each and every soil or each and every country with natural resources. But I think it is the creativity of the Western world that made them to be advanced today. We all know that Africa is not a poor continent. Africa is rich. It is uh, uh, what and, and dealt with huge natural resources. 
I don't think even that we only have few poor countries in South Africa, like places like Burkina Faso, where you cannot have natural resources on their own per se. But in other countries in South Africa, we are there absolutely. The myth about the system here is that people always think and feel that poverty is being manufactured by the Western who are sending to Africa in the name of exploitation. But let us first accept the fact that are we creative enough? Did we ever go under the Renaissance age? We are willing to shake to, to start our own creativity on our own. I know even when it starts from the day of the agrarian society, we are man used to live on, on, on herbs. They try to till the soil and create anything that could benefit themselves. Unfortunately, when you watch at Africa, are we that creative? Are we willing to shake up whatsoever thing that we have? You take a common example. We may say that we are poor because of the Western world. Granted that if we allow the Western world to be traded to Africa, I think the lack of creativity, invention on our own, and depending on foreign mentalities, what that is responsible for our, our being poor here. Liberia is rich into a lot of natural resources. Sierra Leone is rich into a lot of natural resources. But how, how long or what, what have we done on our own to manufacture those resources that we benefit of? We are blaming the Western world. I think the Western world are, who are experts into their own field because they have managed to invent things. That even when you watch at the struggle for a partition of Africa in the 1900s, they tell you that it is because of industrial revolution that took place into Europe and they wanted to disseminate that mentality. But Africa was still there. We never went into any, on, on any renaissance. It's like even when you watch at the mentality of the of, of, of the Pan-African movement. They wanted to develop Africa, but can we develop Africa depending on the Western mentality? No. It is high time we started to blame ourselves first. That poverty is just natural. Because no nobody can tell me that God created you wealthy. God leaves his own natural resources. They are all there. The same natural resources that the Western world have on is the same natural resources that Africa is having. And those in the Western world, they manage to use their own dream to ensure that what they have, they manufacture into something that is good. It was the position of we, the Africans, our government, those who are leading whatsoever thing, to make some innovative things. Before this time, I think when man used to think this way and do whatsoever thing, you have African leaders. Because when they tell us civilization begin in Africa, it's very good in Egypt, people develop along the Nile. What did they used to do? Why do you think Egypt is fighting against poverty? They use the nine out of their own creativity. Egypt does not have any other thing. Egypt is not wealthy. Egypt is only gifted with the nine. Without, without the nine, there is no Egypt. Without Egypt, there is no nine. And that the, Egypt is actually using the, the nine to ensure that they develop Egypt. You watch at Israel. Israel developed out of irrigation. You watch at Europe. Everything about Europe, they started it on, 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 on their own scale, but they use what they have they show that they manufacture everything that they have. What I'm insisting on this way, poverty is just natural. There is nobody that can tell me that God created you wealthy. No, God may give you the knowledge to what? To manufacture what you have to ensure that you become wealthy. Everything about Europe, everything about the Western world, they are advanced the way they are today. It's because they use their brain judiciously, efficiently, and effectively. Unfortunately for Africa, we are not using our brain effectively and efficiently. Rather, we are only um, depending on what the Western world has created. No country in the Western world is talk about like the, the, the one of the strongest economy or if not the strongest in, in economy in, in Europe. You talk about Germany. Germany not be, did not become what it, uh, what it is today out of out of realization. No, they did it out of renaissance and they created whatsoever to the economy is booming today because you have citizens who are explorers. They exploit the, 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 the poverty in, into the environment, but poverty gives rise to creativity. Poverty gives rise to innovation. Poverty gives rise to exploration. Poverty give rise to, to researches. And this is what these people use. What do we have here? We have everything we have. Okay, let's assume that Sierra Leone, we are to have a diamond and do not exploit it. Even with all the riches that we have, just because we are not using the natural environment that we have to turn it into something that we, that we, that we bless, so it is not. So we shouldn't blame the Western world. We shouldn't cast blame on them always. We should understand first, we are not the one that is taking advantage of what we have. Because if... From the days of the proconsul, Homo sapiens, 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 man used to live on whatsoever thing they managed to reach to that stage. What about we? So let us accept the fact that poverty was not uh, what, export, uh, what, exported into Africa. Poverty was not what manufactured into Africa by Europeans, but rather we failed to make use of what we have to, to fight against the poverty. Naturally, we are born poor, we meet the environment poor. It is our responsibility to fight against it. You can be born into a village, you erect a home over there. If you do not use your knowledge to erect that home, no home will go over there. That is what happened. So we should stop blaming the Western world about 
inventing, creating, or manufacturing poverty in Africa. It's the best time mentality that I'm going to subscribe to you. Thank you, Edward Amara. I am enjoying the discussion. Uh, I see a debate uh, emanating here. Those watching us, of course, this is Roundtable Africa, a program like no other you will find anywhere in our community. The topic today, the facts about extreme poverty in Liberia and the hosts and co-hosts of this program that are moderating today share some disagreement here. So let's get to the disagreement here. Gentlemen, what I listened to attentively here is you guys in your qualifying of rich disagree. Edward is saying Africa is rich. Seku is saying, when you say rich, what do you mean? Because you say you have mountains, you have rivers, you have diamonds, and you say you rich. So if that is riches, then how come you don't even have money to build schools? You don't even have PPE. That is what uh, Seku is saying, if I'm understanding him right. So my question, and the other part you disagree on is whether or not colonialism and neocolonialism can be attributed or contribute uh, significantly to the poverty that is in Africa today. You having to disagree, Edward is saying, oh, that in a way back, so people took charge of their own situation, they improve it, why we can't do that, we won't blame the people over and over. So let me come to you, uh, <laughs> Mr. Keller. Who is right here, Edward or you? Well, I believe I'm right. Because you know, I I will quote experts because sometimes when this is what academics allow you, you have to quote experts. Like uh, there are two books I posted to you there. One is called Why Nations Fail. Okay, Why Nations Fail is written by two American professors. And the other one there is How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rudney. Now you will when you read Walter Rudney's work, great Pan-African, how capitalism was used to impoverish African continent and block industrialization is explained there. You, anybody who has grabbed a copy of this book, read it and then come up with your own conclusion. Why nations fail? These professors made a research focusing on China, Japan, and all, all these other countries emerge. They said, look, having natural resources is not enough. And look, I don't disagree with my brother. I didn't say that we did not participate in our own involvement. I said, the poverty is first manufactured in our legislature by our own government. That's what I said first. I didn't just put the blame on the white man. I said we, our legislature, our lawmakers, our government officials, manufacture poverty. What I'm disagreeing on is that poverty is not natural. You cannot fix it on the act of God. That's not it. Everything is science. Nature or God does not create a being without creating all the necessary environment for its survival. That's why animals in the forest are not poor unless we, the human, destroy their environment. But they are naturally, when they are created in the forest, they are not poor. The necessary ecosystem, nature prepare it for their survival. You know, so you don't go in the sea and start looking for poor fish. All the fish there, they are well fed. You don't go into the wild and be looking for hungry animals. Nature's provided the necessary environment for their survival. Same for humans, we are, we, are, we are product of nature. So nature did not produce our poor. Nature produced human race with the necessary environment for our survival. The poverty comes in when we build states. And when we build these states, there is a struggle for resources. And that struggle for resources creates privilege and oppression. So there are a few group of people who oppress the majority so that they can be on top. That's what creates the poverty. That's why we say it is man-made because there are structural issues that have been created to make that poverty to happen so that certain people will be enjoying on top. That's why we have 1% rich people in our country. Look at the gap between the rich and the poor in our African country. Tells you where the poverty is being manufactured. It's very clear. And I said between countries, it's not about colonial master or not colonial master. We are saying that Western country have far systematically blocked the industrialization of African country. That's why we cannot move forward. The so-called development we are doing will never work. I'll give you an example of the SAFA. Of the French countries, the SAFA zone, what has been discovered recently? We find out that the SAFA currency has been controlled by France. And most of the foreign reserve 
of all the uh, of, uh, francophone country are in France. And France is benefiting from it. And France is making sure that the uh, francophone country do not industrialize. That's what brought about the issue of echo. The economists have found that out. And France was using the, this country and they were being under pressure, political pressure. If you do not agree, like Laurent Gbagbo, you will be removed from power. How are we denying this? Do we have economic sovereignty? Who, who decide the price of gold and diamond in the market? Is it Liberia? Who decide the price of cocoa and coffee? Is it Liberia or is the Western country? You have been systematically blocked from, from, from industrialization. And it's very clear before you. Why have you not been industrialized for the past half a century since you go to independence? What's stopping you? Firestone has been in Liberia. Why haven't they built one single factory to manufacture a tire? Why are they taking out the raw material? It's a geopolitics, a geostrategy. Do not allow these people to be industrialized. If they do, our industries will collapse. We will not have raw material to be able to push our industry forward. Congo is the richest country in the world when it comes to natural resources, but it's one of the poorest nations on the planet Earth. What is causing that? Because it's a systematically, they have been blocked from being industrialized. That's why Patrice Mumba was killed. These are not theory we are quoting. These are not things we are manufacturing in our head. When Thomas Sankara decided to go on manufacturing and deny taking loan from World Bank, other places, he was assassinated. These are not things that we are making up. When Kwame Nkrumah decided to go on manufacturing and industrial revolution, he was overthrown. And we found out that the CIA was responsible for his removal from power. Are we manufacturing this information? Are we making them up? Come on now. The poverty is being created. In your own country, your lawmakers are manufacturing poverty and giving it to you. Internationally, the powerful countries are blocking the industrialization. Systematically, they are doing that. They are not going to come broad daylight and say, this is what we're doing, but they are systematically blocking the industrialization of African countries. And as long as we don't have industrial revolution, there will be no end to poverty. You are mute. Edward, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. I I just listened clinically to him. I think you should understand that uh, what what you are saying. Uh, you you quoted some some key people here, like Kwame Nkrumah, Thomas Sankara, Deros, and other people. These are fantastic examples that we have said. But I think uh, those people actually develop the kind of creative mentality that happened into the Western world, and they are wanted to manufacture to, uh, to, 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 to manufacture wealth into Africa because they realized that Africa was already rich. And Africa can use herself to ensure that she develop and compete with the Western world. It is just unfortunate and quite amazing that we, the Africans, or most of our leaders, are not willing to take up the baton of development on our own. We must understand that the Western world depends on Africa for most of the natural resources that they are utilizing today into their industry. And the best way they can do it is to first ensure that we do not independently fight our poverty on our own. Because we have the land, it's very natural, and we know that even if, if in every forest, we also ever will have our natural resources located, those areas are actually poor. But those things on their own, our diamond, our gold, our sliver, boxer, you name them, will not manufacture wealth on their own. It is our brain that we are going to use it. As I was saying, it is just we the Africans have become so lazy, we lack the creativity, and all we want to depend on what the Western world has already created. We must understand that the Western world used their own... What they, have, they never came into Africa first to take African natural resources to go and make experiments on their own. It is because they have the same natural resources that are into the Western world, the same ones that are into Africa. They made experiment, experiments out of it. They managed to develop them, knowing that with an additional natural resources that was searched in, they can also continue to develop themselves. And what Africa can be, instead of us relying on ourselves to, de to develop Africa with the natural resources that we have... Depending on uh, what uh, exploiting the mentality of on what on what they have already created. What I'm Edward. saying here, Edward, you will continue. Are you lazy? You said Africans are lazy. I'm asking your question. Are you lazy? African, you I'm talking about Af well. Uh, uh, when I'm saying Africans are lazy, I may not be part of it. 
But uh, I know those who are actually heading the show, they are definitely lazy because we are talking about lazy Africans. We are talking about those steering the affairs of Africa. The layman can be here. Uh, just take a example. You, you may watch if they, if they show this or they have the carnival show. We are when they come with you. We see a lot of talent. It's a kind of agricultural show that they, they do in Sierra Leone, yeah? and I believe they do it in any other, other African country. When you when you observe the talent of these young people, you must understand that they are talented to Africa. But it's our well, not because they use the natural thing that they have. They have to invent these things. Even when they are in college or university, they ask you to go on practical. You use naturally what you have to to to, to, to ensure that they express their knowledge. But those steering the affairs of Africa are so lazy. They're not willing to to invest into Africa the natural resources that we have. You cannot depend on the mentality of the Western world to develop Africa. Everything that we have here can be used judiciously to develop Africa. As I'm saying, those Western world, they never use any natural resources into Africa to initiate the development that they had over there. They use the natural resources that we are into the Western world, having knowing that if they can exploit some and create a scientific improvement into the natural resources that they have over there, they can change their society positively. Making that kind of fantastic but, but, but and Edward, Edward, they especially Edward, to have hold on, Edward, and we decided to hold buy on, the Edward. ideology instead of investing into it. Edward, can you hear me? Can I am. Me? I just want to yeah. bring to your attention the European world that you're talking about, or the Western world you're talking about. They have to take Africans, and they had cheap, not cheap, but free labor for many years that they didn't pay for, and they have not paid for. And they use that free labor to develop their countries. And you think Africans are lazy? When I was speaking of African are lazy, I'm not saying this, those steering the affairs of Africa. The Western world used slaves for Africa. It was because by then they had never invented the machines that they had. And they had no option whether that to use. That was why just in 1900, when the Industrial Revolution broke up into Europe, they realized that Africans, we are no longer needed. I'm speaking in terms of using what we have to buy, to get what we want. Those people use the, what they have naturally into the Western world, that's what they manufacture with their own brain. They used African as slaves because there was no Industrial Revolution into Europe. When the Industrial Revolution came, it didn't think that it was the brain of Africa that they used to create the, the Industrial Revolution. I know I'm not saying Africa did not partake. Into the, into the industrial revolution into Europe. But they use their own exploitative mentality and create something that is good. Africa is endowed with everything that the Western world has. What can we All use right. our own instead of depending on their own invention? If we depend Thank on the you. Western world invention, we are going mm -hmm. nowhere. They can only give us invention that we allow them to exploit us. So let's accept it. Poverty is into the environment where you are. See, you change that environment to something positive for you. So use the brain what you have to change the environment positively as they have done, or else we end up buying fake ideas from them and not develop Africa. Thank you. Oh, folks, you'll see there. There is a debate here, and I'm loving it. Seku, what do you yeah. have to say? Yeah, you are disappearing in the background. Thank you, Sigan. All the way. Uh, well, I just, you know, just I think he's making my point. But I thought I'm concerned. This last he kind of he kind of supported my point, you know, about when he says you know Western industries depend on African natural resources. Out of all we are discussing here is power. No, he said they did not use. He said they did not use African natural resources to develop their countries. That's what he said. They were, they were not they were that Mali, who, 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 let the historian listen to this. Mali Empire was the richest empire by the 14th century when Europeans were descended down into Africa. It was the richest. There was no empire as rich in, in all of entire Europe at that time to compare to Wagadu Empire and Mali Empire. So they were not developed. But here is the thing. When Western countries came in contact with Africa by around the 14th century, they had a Renaissance age which was about cultural revolution. And that cultural revolution led to the, 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 the some kind of invention that they were doing. Literature were going around, they were trying to explore the world. So the relationship they had with us, and they met us, even though, yeah, we were having the wealth and what have you, but culturally we were had at the, at, the, at, the, at the point of cultural regression. Writings was not there. We were at the point of cultural regression. Ancient Egypt was gone, Sudan, uh, uh, Nubia was gone, we were now building, rebuilding our empire. 
we were, we, were, we were culturally regressing. Everybody knew that. We were not inventing anything, but we had the wealth. But when they came, they had a weapon. They had a weapon and we had the wealth. We did not have the military power to be able to expel them. So because they had a weapon, they took advantage of it. And for 500 years, you gave them free labor. The free labor you gave them, gave them way for industrial revolution. The sugar plantation in the Americas, in Haiti, gave, brought about the industrial revolution in Europe. European children were only going to learn. They were not working. In fact, one of the philosophers, Hegel, and some of the great philosophers in Europe, they said, without slavery, the, in, the modern Europe would not be possible. You know what it means to have millions of people work for you for 500 years without paying them a dime? Find all the companies in your country. Let people work for those companies without paying them and see what is going to happen. So there was that imbalance, five centuries of them being enriched and we've been impoverished. Our continent has been depopulated. We've been under attack from both Muslim, from Asia, from both Christian, from Europe. Our continent was being attacked and we were under fire from two continents and we were in the middle, crossfire, and our people were being used as free. So 500 years different. While they were developing, we were going down. And now we come into modern era of capitalism. Then they say, come to the market and compete. While you already culturally, you are now being Christianized, you are being Islamized, you are now someone else, you are having their names, your culture is not even right, your education is not even right, you don't even have a proper state. Then they're asking you to come and compete in the global market. You do not even have the capacity to do that. So now they are the rich and they discover that industrialization will make you to, to fight them. So they have to block your industrialization. That's what we are talking about. And we use the SAFA as an example. Would you deny what the SAFA has done to francophone country? Do, are you denying that we have more uh, economic sovereignty? Do we make the price for the international market? Are we the one who decide the prices? Yeah, we are not saying that we don't have to be, we don't have blames. We are saying that there's a systematic war, economic war confronting us. And we have to be clear about that. And we have seen leaders who oppose to this rule. They have been removed from power. Modibo Keita, what removed him? What removed, what, 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 what was the problem against Sekou Touré when France sabotaged his economy? Are you not aware? Are you not aware what happened in Ghana when Kwame Nkrumah was removed? So you cannot say you don't blame them when they were systematically killing progressive leaders, when they are systematically removing leaders who could do the work, and they keep dictators who don't do anything, like Paul Beer. When they keep dictators who don't work, but they, 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 they kill progressive leaders. Is that not clear to you that you have an economic war where before you, and instead of you taking weapons, you say you don't want to blame your enemy? What are we talking about? Wow, the debate is on. Uh, Edward, let me give you one minute. We have to take a break and read some comments. Uh, time is fast, yeah, yeah. Go for I, it. Yeah, I think you, you need to understand me. I am mm. not saying, listen and listen very well to my point. They never used African natural resources to initiate the development that they had into Europe. It was because they used their own brain to, to develop also everything they had. That was why they decided to exploit Africa. It was our own responsibility to develop our own state based on the natural resources that we have. We are talking about the Western Sudan Empire. And what Mali, Onamasa, Kanka, Musa, Kintanka, and others could be recalling to such thing. It was because the Western world already manufactured and know the use of gold, diamond, and whatsoever into the Western world. That was why they came into Africa. So it was our responsibility to make initiative. Africans, our leaders, just lack initiative. And if they lack initiative, the Western world, we cannot develop, depend on their own initiative to develop Africa. They will give us an inferior one. At the end of the day, we may be heading for doom. All right, gentlemen, we have to take a short break. Folks watching us here, yeah, focus on Liberia. The topic today is art. And as you see it on the screen there, the facts about extreme poverty in Africa. This is Round Table Africa. Welcome. We will take a short break when we come back. We will read your comments. We always want to make you part of the discussion. Stay tuned and we will be 
Rabbi. At Focus on Liberia, we discuss everything Liberia, from education to politics, arts and culture, entertainment, agriculture, history, religion, family, and technology. Focus on Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates and more tune in to focus on liberia on facebook and youtube and be a part of the stories that make up the news this is focus on liberia and i am dennis job and i am anson is here moderating in this edition of round table africa hosted by Sekou keller and edward amara welcome to the broadcast we are happy that you join us here every wednesday as we look at the issues that are confronting the continent of Africa, we have two of Africa's best songs here discussing the topic, the facts about extreme poverty on the continent of Africa. Let's bring in our listeners and viewers. Corruption equals extreme poverty in poor countries like Liberia. All uh, this feedback, so let me mute you and then we will not have that. All right, then we have, uh, is this Seiman Seiman? Watching from Bari, Italy. I know exactly what you people are saying, and I know exactly too. That is somebody who have lived poverty, speaking right there. Witness Donian, poverty is the result of illiteracy and corruption. I think that uh, writer is on point. They are all tied together. Uh, let's hear from Maria Seaton. Thanks, host and panelist. She writes. Let me hear from Comfort Herring. Uh, while lawmakers are making in the interest of citizen zero. All right. Jimmy Eastman is always watching from Washington, D.C. Jimmy, what's going on there? Uh, have you guys got in your statehood now? I, I saw the protest the other day. Yeah, yeah, from Susan. The lawmakers are our problem, period. All right, let's hear from Franklin Conan where uh, I think this is a two-way street problem. Two-way street problem. The problem first lie, the problem first lies with the influential power, I mean superpower nations who primarily want to con want to continue or who want to continuously keep advancing and pursuing their personal and national interests to the detriment of the developing nations. The second part of the problem lies with our own corruption and insensitive national leaders. I think uh, Colin Franklin uh, captured it there. I, I couldn't agree more. But yeah, from Comfort Henry, Sekukela, you are right. He, she said you are on point. Rubber, go, iron ore, and many resources are taken out of Africa not one rubber slipper or car is made here. And I think that person might be talking about my country, Liberia. James, again, Africans are responsible for their lives. We create poverty on our own serves. All right. Let's hear from uh, Laura here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We have the natural resources. We are greeted by allowing others to come and exploit our resources. Before payment on the table, talking about payment on the table, Liberia saw her birthright by allowing, allowing Firestone to explore rubber for two terms of 99 years contract. Ha, huh. how can we? How, how stupid is that? Let's hear from my man, Augustine Tamba, always washing us from the Sloan community of Ninkrutan, that is my area. I am a dear son of Ninkrutan, gentlemen. Good evening, Edward Amaram, following religiously from a slum community in District 16, Ninkrutan. Uh, let's hear from Kona again. Kona is basically, I disagree with Amara to some extent. When you study and analyze strategic global political economy, economy and social interest struggle, you will get to realize why great nation go to wars? I mean, go to war wars, then the person said. Uh, let's hear from Laura again. Laura writes, the Western world is not richer nor more intelligent than we are. We are just greeted and not ready to what? Work? 
uh, before, I don't know what there, let me leave it there. Uh, let's hear from Maria again. Africa is rich on natural resources, but we do not have technology and factories to refine our rubber, waters, and trees. She is on point. Let's hear from Wolobati Chris Sne. That's a typical crew name right there. I certainly agree with Seku on his points. Poverty is not created by poor people, but is produced by the systems we craft. Our failure to create institutions to support human capacities. Uh, Yunans, I disagree with Amara that colonial powers are not the same, are not so are instigators of poverty. Wow, we have a lot of comments here. Jimmy Eastman again, he comes by. We in Africa have resources, but we do not know how to transform them into worth. The what, who, how questions of business must be analyzed and answered. But the most important uh, is the why. Our leaders and our fellow citizens choose uh, the lowest hanging fruit that is to sell our resources to all of us instead of transforming it ourselves. We even prefer to sell our own brothers rather than work hard to transform our resources into wealth. We cannot expect competitors to help us and hurt. To help us and hurt. All right. I think he is agreeing with uh, Seku read there that the Westerners, they are competitors. <laughs> They're not going to industrialize you or help to industrialize you because you have the best climate. <laughs> you know, you have the best climate. So if you industrialize, chances are that little will be done to the riches that will be created. James again, the Westerners, the Westerners are the root for Africa. I mean, for, for poverty to Africa, they create system in Africa to undermine African solidarity and to corrupt the system in Africa by bringing war to African just to confuse African development. Let's hear from the man Nicholas here. Uh, you are informed to add to you the blacks were forbidden to read and the whites went to school to learn to be on top. You know, the year from here again, he said to the other fellow, most of the things in this war, Edward, were invented uh, by members of African descent. Gentlemen, excellent contribution from our viewers today. We applaud them. We appreciate them. Gentlemen, uh, let me start with you, Edward. What do you make of the comments? You are on mute, Edward. We are watching that thing. We did watch our things uh, on different lines. I think uh, most of them agree with uh, uh, Seku, and some also agree with what I'm saying. But we must all understand that uh, the Western world, they are not the manufacturers of property into Africa. Our weak mentality in trying to make a renaissance on our own, shake off that traditional way of depending on other countries and start doing things on our own is the main reason why we are poor today. They decided to exploit Africa because they already make some invention into Europe. It was our own responsibility to also invent things on our own instead of just depending on what the Western world present to us. If they present a touchlight to you, you can also manufacture a touchlight on your own. But instead, we just accepted everything. So, as some people were rightly saying, we our greedy mentality and weakness to make initiative on our own is all, all, all that is responsible for our poverty today. Thank you. Uh, Seko? Yeah. Yeah, just to, you know, uh, to add to what he said, you know, Look, when we, when we talk about Europeans' exploitation of African states, we are not laying blame. It's not a blame game. We are, you, we are talking about what we call geopolitics and geostrategy. We are saying that these are our adversaries when it comes to economics. In, in, in any war, you identify your adversary. Not because you want to blame them if you lose the war, but you should identify your adversary so that you know where the bullet is coming from. So we are saying Africa should identify Europe as a manufacturer of its poverty. It has to be identified as an adversary in terms of geopolitics and geostrategy. It has to be or, identified. Or, or a competitor. A competitor. You can use anyone. China does not lose guard because they say Europe is not our enemy. They don't do that. Anything coming, they want to monitor even the tariffs. You saw the tariff war between, between Trump and China. Nobody is joking. Economic is warfare. 
Don't let, not let, let nobody tell you that warfare is only when you exchange bullets. Economy is warfare. Resources are scarce. And there is a struggle for resources. So you cannot let somebody come play with your resources or give you little amount or put weak leaders over you. And these weak leaders are traitors. And when they betray the nation and people become poor, they say, we don't blame the white men, we blame ourselves. Who are they ourselves you are talking about here? Because we put in great leaders at the beginning of the century and they were assassinated. They were killed. And we have CIA document, we have declassified document that said Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown by the West. So do we now say if Ghana is not industrialized and a progressive leader was removed, then we say we don't blame anybody? Come on now, let us identify our adversary or competitors in any game. That does not make us to blame them for our failure, but it makes us to build our fences. It makes us to build our defense properly. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, let me bring a few comments again. Uh, this is this one is from Maria Ossiton. The 1% of rich people in Africa are not investing in their countries. They are sending billions to the Western world. Uh, that will support uh, Edward's argument. Uh, let's hear from Confort uh, Henry. Uh, Secretary of Guinea refused the mountain to be operated unless materials from the mountain be made in Guinea. He died untimely. That is another point. And the dictators, according to uh, 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 Seku said here, uh, look at uh, uh, Usman Mubarak. How long was that guy in power in Egypt? Because he was the darling of America? Can you imagine that? Uh, let's hear from Laura. Laura is saying, but the two of you are saying the same thing. Yeah, I cannot agree. Uh, then let's hear from James here. Yeah, James said, African a lack of uh, Africans, a lack of innovation, and our leaders are very wicked to our people. Corruption is the key of they. And I couldn't agree uh, more. Uh, let me hear from Comfort again. She's making said, Edward Amara, why Nelson Mandela was in prison or was prisoner right, in South Africa if you think the West didn't make us poorer? And you know, so I think she's trying to make the point that. You know, uh, Nelson Mandela was a progressive leader, but it was the West that jailed him under the apartheid arrangement, right? Uh, let me hear from Woroblati, Woroblati Saros Snare. Let me make an analogy for Edward to understand the context. Do you hold your wife responsible for agreeing to a man who placed her on a gunpoint to have intercourse with her? Edward, you want to take that one? Edward? You are watching at two different scenarios here. Okay. The Western world deliberately gave their mentality to, to Africans. I think we just benefited out of it to be so relaxed and depend on what they have created. You are using that force. They did not coerce the Africans to accepting what they want to do. It was out of negotiation, giving them that we have manufactured this, we can give you this, we give you all this in return. So it was out of the weak mentality of Africa not to think beyond the bulk of what they are giving them to develop the country. Unlike that, it's the kind of threat. So you can't compare those two situations over there. Our African leaders who are very corrupt, self-centered, unscrupulous in nature, we are called on the round table. And they accepted the, 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 the money in exchange of the diamond instead of saying that if one person rightly made the point over there, Sheikh Tulay wanted everything to develop into Guinea. And that also doesn't mean that Sheikh Tulay is killed. Is he the only leader? If Kwame Krumah is killed in Ghana, is he the only leader? When uh, when Nancy Mandela was in prison, was he the only person fighting? Was Africa just like initiative? If Thomas Akra was killed in, in Burkina Faso, was he the only person to progress Burkina Faso before? We need to have people who stand in with one accord and fight for the for, for the statehood of Africa instead of buying the mentality of the Western world. We allowed ourselves to be exploited. Thank you. Uh, let me hear from uh, Clementine C. Uh, poverty exists not because we cannot feed the poor, but because we cannot satisfy the rich and agree it. That is very philosophical. Seku, you want to comment or respond to that? Yeah, very powerful. You know, the person that asked my brother question is a brilliant question, by the way. It's a very, very brilliant. The analogy is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing wrong with it. He said, do you blame your wife for being raped by somebody who put her on a gunpoint? What they are saying is, your wife did not willingly give in. It was done with uh, under a gunpoint, under threat. Africans were defeated in the war. It's okay. Anybody can be defeated in warfare. 
Even France was defeated by Germany. But Germany let them go after Germany pulled out their currency on the there was a there was a currency of money that was imposed on, on France when Germany took over. They were using money from Germany. Germany was impoverishing them. But after everything European Union talked, Germany withdrew back and they allowed France to go ahead and progress. We lost the war, we agree. So we, uh, we lost the war, that's why we are bearing European names. That's why we got churches. That's why we got mosques. That's why we have the English name. We lost the war. We lost the cultural war. That's why we are having their culture. We lost the war, that's why we are speaking English right now. We agree, but we lost this war. Does that mean that we should not state categorically that they are blocking our industrialization, that they were responsible for 500 years of taking our resources and misusing our people? We have to state the fact for the future generation to even have a thinking paradigm, for them to even know how to identify what is wrong. When we start saying everything is, is just wrong with us and nothing that, not thinking for a bro, that's not a very a wise way to tackle an issue. You have to identify the problem, then now you create. We are saying solution come from within. We are not saying that they are our solution. We are saying that we should identify them as an adversary. And Seku, talking about even today in neo-colonialism, if you look at the multilateral institution of war being an and F, they know that African countries, most of them are poor. They give them loans with huge interest. How are you helping? I mean, how in the world I can have one million dollars in my account, for example? My brother Edward is in uh free time Sierra Leone. He's a student, he just came out of college. He has not gotten a job yet to be able to sustain. He says, Hey, Edward, I will give you hundred thousand dollars for you to start a business, or maybe ten thousand dollars for you to start a business, but the interest on it is 50 percent. How do I expect this brother to survive? What kind of business he's going to do anyway? How many how many person he's going to get to buy his product? Everything is start against him. Basically, I'm telling him, wait for me. And that's why it is. This is what we have. So I agree with Edward uh, in part. I agree with Seku a little more that, yes, this is a war. We lost the cultural war. That's why we're bearing these names. The economic war is raging today. It is raging today. And we have to be able to devise a new strategy. But gentlemen, excellent conversation. I think what we're going to do, we will be on the same topic next week. I enjoyed the topic because of time. I will take a closing statement from both of you. And in your closing statement, I want for you to make your closing argument. Why you think some way, somehow, colonialism, neo-colonialism, and the West is somehow trying to you know, go against Africa economically. And that is part of the reasons uh, Africa is not developed today, even though we Africa share a giant blame of why we are where we are today. So you go first, Edo. Thank you very much. I think that it has been an important and a very interesting debate. All I want to remind all and sundry is that the Western world should not be blamed for the poverty that we're having in Africa because they, they did not initiate it. Rather, our African leaders initiated. All we should understand that life started into Africa. If you think about the proconsul stage, uh, Homo habilis, Homo sapiens sapiens, obviously you must understand that life started in Africa. And based on that note, uh, the Western world created their own way of living. They manufactured yeah, the natural resources that they had, they made some inventions, they created a positive renaissance when they, when their own mentality developed into something that is beneficial for their own continent, they decided to use it yeah. into Africa. Having said that, in Africa, it was our own responsibility to use their own sense of manufacturing those things, to use it on our own and develop something that is positive to Africa. Instead, we, de we, depend, we depend on the on the mentality of the Western world, not manufacturing or creative initiative on our own. We depend on everything. So on that background, we wouldn't blame them. We have what they have. As what they have developed, we also have the, the, the opportunity to develop our We fail to do our own homework, then we shouldn't blame them. If you don't do your homework in school, don't blame your colleague for having a very poor grade. We did not do our own homework. That is why we're having poor grades today. So let us go back to the ground, the drawing table, and do some initiative. We still have huge natural resources in Africa. We can still make some good initiative and benefit the continent. And thank you all. 
Thank ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, my closing argument is this. You know, nature does not create any being without putting in place all the necessary thing in its environment for its survival. You can look around you. If you see any tree grow from somewhere, it's because there were certain elements there that were available that make that tree to even spring up in the first place. Poverty is man-made. It's not natural. It's man-made, it's made by, manufactured by institution, failed in government policies. It's being made by greedy individuals or institutions to be able to take resources away from majority and give it to the few. That's what poverty is, okay? So the poverty we have in Africa is manufactured primarily by our leaders first, our lawmakers, their decision, the policy they make, the way our government spends money, the kind of bilateral agreement they make, the kind of concession they make, they create, they manufacture the poverty that we have. It's not natural, it's not from God, it's not from no spirit, it's our own decision. Now, when it comes to international level, the same apply. Poor countries are not poor because of resources or lack of resources. They are poor because rich countries systematically block their industrialization for their own benefit. If the Congo refused to export cotton, if Congo refused to export bauxite, and all these, all these uranium and all these resources, there will be shortage of telephone, computers, and other electronics on the market. So, and the rich country, Japan need to produce, Germany needs to produce, America needs to produce. So they cannot allow Congo to have an industry. If Congo will have industry, their industry will collapse. It's common sense. So it is important for us to understand that economic is a warfare. And if you lose the economic war, poverty will knock on your door. So African leaders need to understand that we've lost the cultural war with the West. We should not lose the economic war. We are losing it right now. That's why we are in poverty. All the technocrats we have, that are black people working in YMF and World Bank. These are people that are operating within the Western paradigm. They are not operating within the African reality. We need to go back on the drawing table and say, look, we are not, we are true with all day. We don't want to take any economic theory from the West. We want to treat the West as a competitor, as an adversary, and create our own theory and be able to develop our nation. Without industrialization, modernization, poverty will never go away. Thank you so very much. That was Seko Kala with his closing statement. Our man, Jimmy Eastman, interesting is going to close us today in this broadcast. Jimmy Eastman is going to close us today in this broadcast, and this is his statement. We may have been defeated, but our survival must not allow ourselves to lose our value. No war now, so why haven't we changed our trajectory? Because we have not identified what we must produce for our own consumption and what we must produce for global consumption. On that note, folks, we have a song that says, we are all Liberian. We hope you enjoy this edition of Roundtable Africa. We will catch you same time here at Focus on Liberia, where we educate and elevate and promote all things Liberia. A special thanks to Sekou Keller, the host of this program, Roundtable Africa, and Edward Amara, co-host and also Focus on Liberia, West African corresponding base in Freetown, Sierra Leone. I'm Anthony C. I'm moderated, and we'll catch you next Wednesday. Thank you, for, thank you so. Bye-bye. We are Liberia.